If you've got the DJI O3 Air unit, then there's been a feature of Betaflight 4.4 that you haven't been able to take advantage of until today. I'm gonna to show you in this video how the new firmware for the DJI O3 Air unit allows you to take advantage of the high definition OSD feature of Betaflight 4.4 and other firmwares as well, but obviously my channel being what it is, I'm mostly familiar with Betaflight 4.4. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. What in the heck is high definition OSD and why do you definitely, definitely want to take advantage of it? If you already know the answer to that question, then you can look down in the timeline below the video and there are chapter markers there or they're also in the video description and you can just skip ahead to the next chapter where I show you how to take advantage of it. But in case you haven't figured this out yet, here is the Betaflight OSD tab where I can move my OSD elements around and you can see that it is not a 16.9 widescreen layout, like a lot of modern systems operate in 16.9. And what that means is that when you're looking in the goggles, you only get to put the OSD elements in the center square in the middle of the screen. You can't push the OSD elements out to the side, which is just kind of probably where you'd like them to be. Uh, the other advantage of the high definition OSD is you can see that this grid that we can lay these elements out on is relatively large and the characters are relatively large. That made sense when we had standard definition analog cameras. Those systems just didn't have a lot of resolution and you had to use large uh, characters. But with high definition systems that have higher resolution, you want to be able to use smaller, higher resolution, better looking characters, and you want to lay them out on a more precise grid with smaller grid squares. And that is what high definition OSD gives you. But the O3 Air unit has not been able to take advantage of this until very recently because although Betaflight, iNav, KISS, etc., all support high definition OSD, DJI hadn't updated their code to use it. And today they have, sort of. So in order to get high definition OSD working, number one, you're gonna to need to be on a flight controller firmware that supports high definition OSD. In the case of Betaflight, you're gonna to need to be on Betaflight 440 or newer. You're gonna to need to go into the ports tab and you're gonna see that on one of your UART numbers, you'll have the MSP option enabled. And that's gonna be the UART that your DJI Air unit is connected to. And then in Betaflight 4.4, you're gonna go over to peripherals and you're gonna enable VTX MSP plus display port. And you're gonna save that. Next, you're gonna go into the CLI and you're gonna to need to type set OSD underscore display port underscore device. We'll just use the autocomplete here. Set OSD underscore display port device equals MSP and type the word save. And then we're gonna go to the OSD tab and we are gonna choose HD as the video format instead of PAL or NTSC. And you're gonna see that when you do that, now we will have a 16.9 widescreen uh, canvas, if you will, to lay out the OSD elements on and we can drag them around. In addition, the uh, squares that we use to lay out the letters are a lot smaller and we can position things more precisely on screen and the font is a little bit smaller. So I'm just gonna hit save there and let's power up our goggles and take a look at what that looks like. And what you're gonna see is that nothing has changed. Nothing has changed in the goggles. It still looks the same as it did before I made this change. And in fact, if I try and move one of these elements over, it's not gonna work right. It's just gone. Where did it go? The reason it's not working is that I also have to update the firmware on my goggles and my air unit for them to also support this feature. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll update the firmware on the goggles first. And we'll go to the DJI Assistant 2 Consumer Drone Series app, plug in the goggle USB, and we'll see that the latest firmware is 01.05.0000. And it actually looks like I have previously updated my goggles to this firmware, so I don't need to do this. Uh, if you haven't, you'll click update, upgrade, and you'll flash that firmware to your goggles. Next, I'll plug in to the USB on the air unit. And uh, nicely, we do not need to power the air unit up with a battery. We can flash it with it powered down, uh, and it's not gonna like overheat or be at risk of our quadcopter powering up. And on the air unit, the latest available firmware is 01.02.0000. And 
That one has already been updated. Why the hell didn't it work? Well, now we're on the correct version of the firmware and it's still not working. And the reason for that is that there is an option inside the goggles you need to change in order for it to start working. And that option is under settings, display, and then canvas mode. We're gonna change that from normal to HD. And when we back out, now you can see that it looks exactly like it looks here in my Betaflight configurator. And I can sort of drag things anywhere on screen that I wanna drag them. There's one more option in Betaflight that can cause this to not work correctly. And if DJI had fully implemented the HD OSD, then we wouldn't even need to talk about this, but they didn't. And I'm gonna tell you what that option is right after I tell you about my Patreon. Patreon's a website where you can subscribe to me for as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned it. The amount that you subscribe at is totally up to you. Just ask yourself how much value you think you get out of my, how much would you pay somebody to do what I do for free every month? And whatever number pops into your head, head on over to my Patreon and sign up at that amount. You can, anytime you change your mind, you can just stop or you can raise or lower the amount. It's totally up to you. Patrons get access to my Discord server, which is full of friendly, helpful people who will talk about FPV with you, help you solve your problems. There's even a buy, sell, trade forum where you can sell your used gear or look for good deals on used gear. Uh, but mostly what I hope you get out of joining up is the great feeling of getting giving back. I know what it's like to binge on content from a creator and then one day you look up and you go, you know what? I've been getting so much out of this guy and I haven't given a single thing back. Today's the day. And then I go and I sign up however they ask me to. If today is that day for you, yay. There's a link in the video description to my Patreon. If today's not that day, that's okay. I'm just going to keep making the content. I hope you'll keep watching the content. Maybe that day will come. If I go to the CLI and I type the words, get canvas, uh, I can see there are two options here, OSD canvas width and OSD canvas height. And these are the options that, if not set correctly, can screw, uh, screw Betaflight up. This defines the grid width and height when you're using, well, I think it applies to standard definition OSD as well, but it's most relevant when you're using the high definition OSD. And the correct values for the DJI O3 system uh, is 53 and 20. Uh, and those values should be the defaults, but there may be situations where those values are not correct. For example, if you have a quadcopter that uses WTFOS with a Cadex Vista and the goggles, uh, the V2 goggles, it has a different canvas width and height. And what DJI didn't do when they implemented high definition canvas in the O3 is they didn't implement a feature of Betaflight that lets the video transmitter tell the flight controller things about itself. So when you're using WTFOS with a, with a Vista video transmitter, uh, then Betaflight will just talk to the video transmitter and it'll say, hey, my canvas width and my canvas height are X and Y. And that will get put into your CLI. And then if you later paste that CLI dump into an O3, because like you're trying to copy your OSD from one quad to another, the incorrect canvas width and height will get copied in from the WTFOS quad. It would be ideal if DJI had implemented the full capability to have the VTX communicate these values so that they would always be correct, but they didn't. Uh, and so if you get into a situation where like you're putting things on the right side of the screen, but they're like off the edge of the screen in the goggles, or it feels like you've moved something to the edge of the screen, but actually it's only in the middle of the screen. It's not going all the way to the edge. It could be that your canvas width and your canvas height are incorrect. And the way to, to fix that is to just go here and just type set OSD underscore canvas uh, height equals 53, set OSD, what did I type wrong? Canvas underscore width equals 20. Oh, that one worked, I must've misspelled the other one. Mm, just put that stuff in and type save and it'll make that value correct. The next thing you might be wondering is what about those cool fonts that I've seen other people using? Like for example, here's the walk snail system and you can see they've got this high resolution, high definition, cool looking font. And it's even got color, like some of the, have green, red, yellow. Uh, this, unfortunately, is another thing 
that DJI has not yet implemented and you cannot do. So you can use the high definition canvas, but you are locked to DJI's default font and you can't get access to the color fonts that the other digital systems can use. And maybe DJI will implement this at some point in the future, who knows, but for now, it's just not an option. So that's how to set up HDOSD with the new firmware for the O3 Air unit. But it turns out this feature has been out for a little while for all of the other digital systems, HD0, Walksnail, and the older DJI V2 with WTFOS. If you've got any of those systems, I previously released a tutorial video about how to get them set up. It's not the same, some of the steps are the same, but some of the steps are different. And I'm gonna put a card on screen where you can check that out. In addition, if you have any of those other systems you can also do the custom fonts and they're pretty freaking cool. I'm gonna put a card on screen to that video as well as a link in the video description if for some reason you can't see the cards. I'll see you there.